I spent 10 years developing MO Group from the brink of bankruptcy to going public. On the day we rang the bell, Eva MO publicly announced that her unforgettable first love would be the general manager. While I was working overtime for the company and ended up in the hospital, she was busy taking care of him when he sprained his ankle playing ball, not coming home all night. My heart turned to ashes, and I finally gave up, but she begged me, don't go, I can't live without you, can't live, then just don't. At the celebration party, Eva publicly announced the appointment of Diego as the general manager, with an annual salary of millions. Immediately, everyone's slightly amused eyes turned to me. Industry insiders all knew that I was Eva's boyfriend. From a company on the verge of bankruptcy to a public listing, I had poured countless efforts into family MO. From opening up the market to planning projects, I handled everything. As for Eva, she only needed to stand tall and be the chairman. And now, Suddenly appointing a general manager to replace my position was equivalent to a blatant slap in the face. Compared to everyone else, Eva didn't notice my embarrassment at all. Her eyes were always on Diego. She held his arm, accompanying him around to meet prominent figures in the circle. And from time to time, she would look up and smile at him. The shyness and admiration in her eyes were just like back then. The atmosphere at the party was terrible. So I took a glass of red wine to the terrace. I drank too quickly, and the sour liquid slid down my throat making me cough. Luis, are you okay? I looked up. It was Carolina, the eldest daughter of the Gu family, the richest family. I put down the glass. I'm fine. Tisk, still pretending to be strong. Carolina sat down beside me. People are stepping all over you. It's none of your business. As long as Eva was willing, I didn't care. Consider coming to Chu Group. As long as the old man is alive, I won't go. Carolina leaned over and stared at me. Their old feelings have rekindled. They're lovey-dovey every day and you can stand it. Eva is my girlfriend. I'll take care of her. You don't need to worry. Tisk. Still so stubborn. I don't understand. What's so good about Eva? Her looks, temperament, family background, ability, none of them match you. Are you a masochist? I clenched my fists. If you keep nagging, I won't be polite. Okay. Okay. I won't say any more. Same bad temper as when you were a kid. Carolina poured red wine into both her glass and mine, then handed it to me. Come, have a drink with me. I took it, clinked glasses with her, and drank it down. Luis, since when did you become so close with Mr. Chu? The voice carried a hint of jealousy. I turned around to see Eva holding Diego's arm, standing not far behind. Carolina raised an eyebrow. Eva, if you don't make good use of Luis, don't blame us at Chu Group for poaching him. With that, she scoffed, turned around, and left. Eva watched her back, displeased, and asked, What does she mean, trying to poach you to the Gu family? Just casual talk. I didn't want to say more, I know you won't go. She can at most offer you a department manager position. Here at MO Family, you're a vice president. From general manager to vice president, I was speechless. Diego smiled at me kindly. Luis, we'll be colleagues from now on. After I take office, I'll need your guidance. I said flatly, no need. I don't have a habit of assisting others. I know you're unhappy about me taking your position. Diego looked apologetic. I didn't want this either. But Eva said that after the company went public, it lacked high-end talent. She persuaded me repeatedly, and I couldn't refuse. High-end talent? I couldn't help but ask, Mr. Wong, which major companies have you worked for abroad over these years? Diego's gentle demeanor cracked a bit. Luis, I worked hard to bring Diego back. Don't make trouble. Okay. Eva snapped at me. It's just a general manager position. Why must you compete with Diego? I've let you be general manager for 10 years. It's time for someone else. Diego has a master's degree from abroad. It's not a demotion to be his deputy. Eva, as long as you say the word, I can step down from the general manager position. But I won't be a vice president. Being a stepping stone was bad enough. I didn't want to be a simp. Anyway, Eva and I were about to get married. It was better to leave the company and enjoy some home life. Diego interjected. Luis, I just returned and am not familiar with the business. If you leave abruptly. It might cause losses to Eva's company. Diego, it's kind of you to think of me. Seeing her smiling tenderly at him, my heart sank. After 10 years of dating, she had always been spoiled and capricious with me. I thought that was just her nature, but it turned out it varied by person. Luis, you must be the vice president. I want you to hand over all your work and resources to Diego within three months. Eva, I, don't say no. Eva said angrily, if you keep making a fuss, give flour back to me. I don't want it staying with a petty man. Fine. Diego looked at me with a smile, his eyes full of pride. Eva knew how to handle me. After 10 years of dating, I had always obeyed her. Whenever we quarreled, as soon as she mentioned Flower, I would yield. Flower was a cat Eva gave me when we were kids. When I was 10, my parents divorced, and my mother took me away with nothing. 
From a favored child to a nobody, my classmates mocked and teased me. Only Eva said nothing but secretly put a kitten in my school bag. It was a newly born kitten, with messy fur and a bit dirty. It became my only companion for many years. Right now, Flower was lying in my lap. At 18 years old, Flower was said to be equivalent to a person in their 80s or 90s. I cherished its remaining time and held it whenever I was home. Flower was attached to me but not to Eva. Eva didn't like it either and often took it from my arms and threw it on the carpet. I bent down to pet Flower and let it play on the side. Eva. We agreed to prepare for the wedding after the company went public. When do you think we should set the date? Eva's expression was unnatural. There are still many things not ready. Let's wait a bit longer. You just need to choose the wedding dress and attire. I'll handle the rest. All you think about is getting married. Getting married. Eva walked around the room irritably. Can't you think about me for once? Diego just came back. Isn't familiar with the business yet. And there are two major projects halfway through. How can I think about getting married? Don't worry. I'll help him complete these two projects. I placed my hands on her shoulders to comfort her. Let's have dinner together tonight. I made your favorite squirrel fish. Eva pushed my hands away. I have a meeting with Diego and a client. You eat by yourself. For the next half month, I worked with the planning department every day until midnight. On one hand, the client's timeline was tight. On the other, the plan was revised over and over. After Diego took office, every planning proposal had to be approved by him. Each time we submitted it, he would send it back. The plan is no good. Redo it. We revised it version after version, but it was never approved. When we asked him what the problem was, he wouldn't say. Finally, manager Chin of the planning department lost his patience. This is the result of Ming assistant manager and his team pulling several all-nighters. We've really done our best, Diego said. Doing your best is not enough. I want perfection. Boss. Wong. Tell us what's wrong, and we'll revise it according to your requirements. You've been doing this for so many years and can't even see the problems. How did you manage before? Diego's gaze swept over everyone and finally landed on me. Manager Chin turned red with anger. The planning projects that MO family has done over the years have always been well received by clients. Diego's face darkened. Are you implying that I lack judgment? Manager Chin didn't respond, silently acknowledging. If you think I'm incompetent, then you don't need to work under me. Go to finance and collect your salary, and don't come in tomorrow. What do you mean? I've worked for Mo family for so long and never made a mistake. What right do you have to fire me? I'm the general manager. If I want to, I can fire anyone. During the argument, Eva came in from outside. What's all this noise? I could hear it from far away. Eva, you're just in time. Diego looked dejected. I can't be the general manager. I think I'd better leave. Eva glanced at everyone. Diego. What happened? Manager Chen and his team are all Mr. N's people. I can't manage them. I'm sorry to disappoint you. With one sentence, he directly pointed the blame at me. Luis, are you making things difficult for Diego again? Eva glared at me. I said. Manager Chen and his team produced several versions of the plan. And Mr. Wang didn't approve any of them. We just wanted to know what the issues were. Is that too much to ask? I just strive for perfection and want each plan to be the best. Bringing the greatest benefits to the company. Eva, am I wrong to do that? You did very well. Eva patted Diego to reassure him. You're looking out for me. Manager Chen didn't follow orders and openly contradicted me, affecting company morale. I had no choice but to set an example. All right. Without hesitation, Eva said, Pablo, you don't need to come in tomorrow. I pleaded, Eva, this has nothing to do with Manager Chen. It's me who, before I could finish, Eva coldly interrupted. He dared to defy Diego because he has your backing. Let me make it clear today. This company is mine. If I appoint Diego as general manager, he is your superior. His words represent my intentions. Anyone who disobeys will be dismissed by Diego. This applies to everyone in the company. When she said the last sentence, Eva's eyes were fixed on me. She was making it clear to everyone that no one could defy Diego, including me. Manager Chen was ultimately dismissed by Diego. He didn't even give him the chance to resign voluntarily. Pablo had been with me for five years capable and loyal. I couldn't just stand by and do nothing. On the day he left, I called Carolina. I have a very capable assistant leaving my team. Do you need anyone on your side? Anyone you recommend can't be bad. Let him report to HR tomorrow. After hanging up the phone, I told Pablo, if you're willing, take my business card to the Gu family tomorrow. They'll arrange a suitable position for you. Thank you, Mr. Ming. Pablo's dejection turned to joy instantly. After all, the Gu family was a business giant. Getting into such a big company was a rare opportunity. Before leaving, Pablo repeatedly advised me to be careful. MO Group now is just like Zhaoga in the function legend. Eva is blinded by Diego. You, as the main wife, must be cautious. After sending Pablo off, I felt a dull pain in my lower right abdomen. In the early years of starting the business, I often stayed up late and had irregular meals. 
leading to chronic appendicitis. These past few days, with both exhaustion and anger, it flared up again. I was about to take some medicine when the planning department came in to ask how to revise the plan. Print a new copy and send it to Mr. Wong in a couple of days. Will that work? Do as I say. If anything goes wrong, I'll take responsibility. Three days later, we resubmitted the plan, and Diego sent it back again. The reason, still not perfect. Print another copy for him. A week later, Diego finally approved it. Everyone was exhausted from working so hard these past few days. I told them to go home and rest while I finished the final touches. These days of staying up late and not resting well had made the pain in my lower right abdomen worse. Tonight, it was even more severe. I took some medicine, thinking I'd go to the hospital tomorrow. Half an hour passed with no improvement. Instead, the pain intensified, making it impossible to stand upright. I clutched my stomach, realizing I couldn't hold on any longer. It was already past 11 at night, and all the company staff had left. I dialed Eva's number. Eva, where are you? Can you come and get me? She seemed to be outdoors. I could hear the wind blowing. What is it? Why does a grown man need me to pick him up? I'm not feeling well. By the time I said this, I was already sweating on my forehead. Oh, where are you now? As soon as she finished speaking, I heard an ouch from the other end of the phone. What happened? Let me see. Her voice was anxious. My foot seems to be twisted. It was Diego. Oh my god. Is it serious? Not sure. It hurts a lot. No. I have to take you to the hospital now. Eva ended the call abruptly, completely forgetting about me on the other end of the line. The pain in my abdomen was unbearable, so I called Carolina. She rushed over in her car and took me to the hospital. The emergency doctor examined me and said I had acute appendicitis and needed surgery. Carolina complained. You're an adult and still don't know how to take care of yourself. Despite her words, she ran around paying bills and handling the admission procedures for me. I lay alone in a corner, aimlessly scrolling through my social media feed to distract from the pain. Ten minutes ago, Diego had just posted a set of pictures. Eva was talking to the doctor, feeding him porridge, smiling at him, placing his bandaged ankle on her lap. Caption, it's great to have someone who cares. My heart twisted in agony. For ten years, I had been devoted to her, giving her everything I had, loving her, caring for her, protecting her felt like responsibilities flowing in my blood. I never expected anything in return from her, but at this moment, seeing her concerned eyes and coy smile, I suddenly realized. She had never smiled at me like that. Her eyes had never shown any love for me. What's wrong? Jealous? Carolina had returned to my side without me noticing. They've been showing up together at various events lately. I thought you were already used to it. Cold sweat beaded on my forehead. I, I didn't know. I thought you were willing to be a ninja turtle for the sake of past favors. A few nurses came over to will me into surgery. Carolina held my hand and walked with me to the operating room door. Don't be afraid. Sis will be here waiting for you when you come out. After the surgery. I want seafood porridge. Okay, I'll get someone to cook two king crabs right now. Despite the pain, a smile tugged at my lips. Thankfully, I had someone who loved me too, because I needed to pass gas after the surgery. It wasn't until the third day that I could finally eat the seafood porridge. Unfortunately, a few innocent king crabs had been sacrificed in the meantime. Carolina stayed with me in the hospital these past few days, even finding time to go to my house and feed flour. She postponed as much work as she could, and for urgent documents, she had her secretary bring them to the hospital room. When I felt a bit better, I checked my phone and was bombarded with hundreds of missed calls and messages, all from Eva. Before I could respond, the phone rang. Luis, where are you? Why haven't you returned my calls? She demanded. I just had appendicitis surgery and I'm in the hospital. Oh, she seemed to calm down a bit. When will you be discharged? The client is pressing for the planning proposal. My body hasn't recovered yet. The doctor wants me to stay for a week of observation. I uncharacteristically showed weakness in front of her. You're just lying in the hospital anyway. I'll have someone bring you a laptop so you can finish it quickly. Okay. The moment I put down the phone, I couldn't deny feeling disappointed. Lying in bed these past two days, I kept convincing myself. She chose to go to the hospital with Diego that day instead of me because she didn't know I was sick and needed care too. If she knew I was hospitalized, she would have taken care of me just like she did for him. However, reality hit hard. No concern. No companionship. All I got was a laptop. Eva came with Diego. Look, Diego cares about you. Even with his injured foot, he still made an effort to visit you. Diego smiled at her. Thanks to your care these past few days, I'm much better. He was here to stab me in the heart, wasn't he? I didn't want to see their performance in front of me, so I gestured for them to leave the laptop and go. Luis, you need to hurry up, otherwise. Diego will have a hard time explaining to the client. My boyfriend is lying in a hospital bed, 
and all you care about is performance. In the 10 years we've been together, this is the first time I've seen you so focused on work, I couldn't hold back, and my tone turned sharp. Eva was stunned for a moment. Appendicitis is not a big deal. I thought you always had a strong constitution, so it shouldn't be a problem. She paused. What do you want to eat? I'll bring it to you tonight. Her words softened my heart again. Forget it. You go ahead. I have a nurse here. I suddenly remembered something. By the way, in the next few days, can you feed flour in the evenings? A friend helped feed her the past few days, but she's busy, and I don't want to trouble her too much. Okay, I know. Eva complained. No matter what, you're always thinking about that cat. It's just a cat. That was the first gift you gave me. Of course I cherish it. Eva's expression turned a bit unnatural. She said she had work at the office and left with Diego. I lay on the bed, feeling inexplicably sad. How little confidence must I have in our relationship to resort to using a cat to demonstrate against my rival? As I was thinking, Diego returned. Anything else? I asked. He stood there, half smiling. Luis, you just mentioned flower. The cat Eva gave you when she was a child, right? Yes, you could say it was our token of love. He looked like he had heard the funniest joke in the world. That cat was never a gift. It was just a stray she picked up from the roadside. I can't believe you have been so devoted to it. Impossible. I sat up abruptly. Don't try to drive a wedge between Eva and me. She told me herself. Your parents divorced, and many classmates bullied you at that time. Eva saw a stray kitten on the roadside, picked it up, and stuffed it into your backpack. Then she turned around and reported to the teacher that you brought a pet to school. Think back. Didn't you get scolded by the teacher afterward? Seeing my silence, he became even more smug. In your eyes. That act of kindness was just someone playing a prank on you. So, stop holding on to this sentiment. Eva never liked you. She only kept you around to fill the void. Now that I'm back, it's time for you to leave. But I must thank you for managing MO Group so well and handing it over to me. Ha ha ha. Diego left. But his words kept echoing in my mind. Flower was not a gift from Eva. It was just her prank on me. To this day, I can still clearly remember Eva smiling at me when the teacher pulled Flower out of my backpack. At the time. I thought it was a smile of encouragement, but it turned out to be one of triumph. The memory shattered my conviction instantly, from beginning to end. It was all just my wishful thinking. On the day of my discharge, Carolina dropped me off downstairs. She had other matters to attend to, so she left. As I opened the door, a sudden sense of foreboding came over me. Usually, when I came home from work, Flower would wait at the door upon hearing the sound. Flower. I called out a few times, but there was no response. I rushed inside and found her in a corner behind the sofa. She lay there stiffly, already cold and hard. The two bowls for her food and water were both empty. Eva hadn't come to feed her. Flower had starved to death. I held Flower in my arms, my body shaking uncontrollably. The once warm and soft little creature now lay stiff and cold in my embrace. I found a beautiful cartoon box and placed Flower inside, along with her favorite toy, her food bowl. Under a tree in the nearby park, I dug a deep hole and personally buried her. Flower after accompanying me for 18 years, was finally gone. She had witnessed my gratitude, longing, and deep love for Eva. Her departure severed my last attachment to Eva. The next day, I went to the office and handed in my resignation letter. Two things. First, resignation. Second, breakup. Eva shrieked. Luis, are you crazy? What are you doing? Flower is dead. She starved to death. Eva froze, stammering after a long pause. I've been so busy with the company these past two days that I forgot to feed her. I reminded you no less than three times. So what? You're breaking up with me over a stupid cat. Stupid cat. I laughed bitterly. Of course. To you. Flower was just a stray cat. A tool for a prank. What are you talking about? Eva's eyes flickered. Didn't you tell Diego yourself? I sneered. Stop pretending. Since you love someone else, let's break up. I don't agree. Eva was furious. Even if we break up, it should be my decision. And I don't accept your resignation letter either. Whether you approve it or not is your problem. Starting tomorrow. I won't come to the company. From now on, you're no longer my girlfriend. Luis, you bastard. What on earth is wrong with you? I calmly said. I'm not crazy. I'm just completely disillusioned with this relationship. Eva, you like Diego, right? I give you your freedom. From now on, you two can be together without ever having to separate. My previous tolerance and patience made it hard for Eva to accept the current me. Seeing me walk out, she threw a fit and swept the documents off her desk onto the floor. Luis, if you dare leave today. Don't ever think about coming back. I will never forgive you. I waved my hand behind me without looking back and left without any hesitation. Just like Carolina said, a relationship with no value should be cut off like an appendix. After resigning from the company, I packed a small bag and bought a ticket to a Southeast Asian island. For 10 years, I had been working tirelessly. Now, lying under the clear blue sky, basking in the tropical sun, 
Listening to the sound of the waves, I felt an intoxicating sense of relaxation. But the good times didn't last long. Less than two weeks later, someone came looking for me. Carolina. Luis. I'm sick. I jumped up from the beach chair. The last time I heard those words was when my mother was diagnosed with lung cancer. What's wrong? My voice trembled. After all, she was the only family I had left in this world, biologically, excluding that father of mine. The doctor said there's a problem with my digestive system. If it progresses, it could turn into colon cancer. How could this happen? You've always been healthy. Tears welled up and streamed down my face. Don't be afraid. It's not that serious yet. The doctor just suggested I shouldn't overwork myself and need to rest well. I wiped my tears. Then stop working and come vacation with me. She shook her head. I can't. The two sons of the old which are always eyeing the top positions in the Gu family. If I step down, the old men will definitely arrange for them to take my place. The Gu family is the legacy left by grandpa. I can't let it fall into outsiders' hands. If it weren't for this, when mom and dad divorced, I wouldn't have stayed with that old man, I said. But you can't risk your life for this. I have no choice. Even if it costs my life, I have to protect grandpa's legacy. Unless, she paused. You come and help me. I scrutinized her for a while. Are you lying to me just to get me back to the Gu family? She pulled out a piece of paper. Here, the medical report. I unfolded it and read it carefully. It was filled with medical terms. And at the bottom, the conclusion was, cologne polyps. Seeing my puzzled expression, she explained, my polyps are different from ordinary ones. They're more dangerous, considered a precancerous condition. You can look it up. Sigh. I know you hate the old man. Ever since mom divorced him, you never wanted to see him again. It's okay. I'll fight them on my own. As long as you're happy. I'll have peace when I meet mom in the afterlife. My nose tingled. Sis. Stop. I'll go back with you. Really? Are you sure it's not too much for you? You've sacrificed so much over the years. It's my turn now. Together. We'll drive out the old witch and her sons from the Goo family. Good. And the old man too. We'll kick them all out. I hugged Carolina tightly. Feeling the long lost warmth of family. I didn't notice the large X she drew on the soft sand with her high heel. Carolina and I took the same flight back to the country. The next day, I assumed the position of consulting manager at Goo. My grandfather started his career with consulting and planning, and the consulting company held a unique position within the entire group. He had only one daughter, my mother, who had no interest in business, so he groomed his son-in-law as his successor. But soon after my grandfather passed away, Joel Goo had a mistress. My mother couldn't tolerate it and sought a divorce. During the division of assets, she discovered that the company had already become an empty shell. With all assets transferred to the Gu family name, my mother left with me, harboring deep resentment, and passed away a few years later, heartbroken. No one understood my mother's regrets better than I did, and I was determined to reclaim the company with my own hands. Thanks to Carolina's prior arrangements and my reputation in the consulting industry, taking over the company was smooth. As she was leaving, Carolina asked me, Do you want me to get back at Eva for how she treated you? No, I'll handle my own affairs. We're in the same industry so we'll inevitably run into each other. Don't go easy on her. Do I seem like the kind of person who mixes personal and professional matters? I brought MO Group to where it is now. I can bring it back down. Good. That's the brother I know. Carolina left happily. On my first day in office, I reassigned manager Chen to my general office. Pablo was ecstatic. Wow. I'm so lucky to work with Mr. Ming again. I said. Don't celebrate just yet. I have an important task for you. I handed him a list of MO Group's key consulting and planning staff. Contact these people and see if any of them are willing to join Goo Consulting. Their salaries will be doubled. No problem. Leave it to me. Actually, I've been in touch with some people at MO Group. Many of them are already looking to jump ship. Diego is a complete outsider who knows nothing and just gives random orders. Today he wants this. Tomorrow he wants that. Everyone's frustrated and fed up. I had thought Diego was just targeting me. But it turned out he treated everyone the same way. Hasn't Eva said anything about his behavior? Diego takes credit for the good work and blames others for the bad. The worst part is, Eva seems to be completely under his spell. Great news. I raised an eyebrow. Bring those people over and set up a separate department. You'll be in charge, specifically to compete with Diego. Got it. You can count on good news soon. Pablo, eager to get back at Diego, went off cheerfully. I smiled slightly. MO Group was in danger. As I expected, Diego's chaotic management caused widespread resentment within MO Group, the planning department staff whom I had recruited from various places, readily submitted their resignations when they heard I was recruiting them to go consulting with double salaries. The funniest part was that Diego, thinking they were resigning to spite him for my sake, approved all their resignations without a second thought. By the time Eva arrived at the company the next day, those people had already joined Goo Consulting. Eva stood in the empty planning department, bewildered. If you let all these people go, 
How will the company handle new projects? Diego confidently said. Those who resigned were Luis's cronies. Now that he's gone, they weren't going to work properly anyway. It's better to let them go and hire new employees. Eva said nothing but came to Gu Consulting after work to confront me. Luis, what is your relationship with Carolina? Eva, what are you trying to say? Were you with her even before we broke up? I sneered. Do you think everyone is like you and Diego? Aren't you? Eva grabbed my wrist, her long nails digging into my flesh. You quit MO Group, and immediately Carolina made you general manager. You helped her poach MO Group's people. Are you telling me there was nothing between you two? Diego is single and has the right to pursue whoever he likes. But you, while with me, cozied up to the Goo family. You are the real scumbag. You're not even worthy to lick Diego's boots. Eva, is that really how you see me? My wrist hurt from her grip, but the real pain was in my chest. She was my first love, and I had loved her with all my heart for 10 years. When MO Group was on the brink of bankruptcy, Diego abandoned her and left for 10 years. Yet she never spoke ill of him. I stood by her through thick and thin, but she repaid me with harsh words. This was the woman I thought I could spend my life with. I asked, do you know what my name was before I turned seven? Eva looked confused, not understanding where I was going. When I was seven, my parents divorced. I took my mother's surname before that. My name was Luis Gu. I am Carolina's younger brother. Do you understand now? Eva looked as if she had been struck by lightning, her face turning pale. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. I was just speaking without thinking. Words spoken in haste often reveal true feelings. Eva. Thank you for personally severing the last shred of affection I had for you. Eva looked panicked. Luis, I admit I misjudged you, but there's really nothing between Diego and me. You made him the general manager, replacing my position. You let him hold your waist and attend various public events. When I had appendicitis, you hung up on my call for help to take care of his sprained ankle. If that's not love, what is? Stop lying to yourself. You've already made your choice between him and me. Eva lowered herself and pleaded. Luis. I admit I didn't handle things well. Come back. M.O. Group can't do without you. Come back. You want me to come back and watch you and Diego be all lovey-dovey? I looked at her and said calmly, Eva, we have broken up. From now on, we're just strangers. Let's not dwell on the past. Diego lived up to his word by hiring a batch of planning personnel at below market salaries. Soon, due to a major contract, Goo Consulting and M.O. Group faced off directly. I entrusted Pablo with this project. I'm giving you a chance to go head to head with Diego. Don't let me down. Thank you, Mr. Ming. Pablo was raring to go. I'll make sure to grind him into the ground. Pablo had been the manager of the planning department for five years and had the capability to handle things independently. He worked with the planners who came over from Mo Group, and after a week of hard work, they produced a comprehensive plan. On the day of the bidding, Pablo and I ran into Eva and Diego. There were four or five companies participating in the bid that day. With Goo Consulting and MO Group being the most likely to win, the order was decided by drawing lots, and Goo Consulting was up first. Pablo spoke eloquently, with a detailed plan and solid data. When the client representative asked a few questions, Pablo answered fluently. When it was MO Group's turn, Diego presented their plan. After just a few sentences, I couldn't help but laugh. As the saying goes, an expert knows the ropes. Diego's plan seemed to be cobbled together from past proposals, filled with data scraped from the internet and presented as something new, he seemed somewhat unsure of himself, frequently flashing his trademark smile at the female client representative, I could hardly hold back my laughter, using charm in such a setting, what a move, Eva, standing beside him, looked increasingly displeased, as expected, Gu Consulting won the contract, Pablo proudly came to me to claim credit, Mr. Ming, how was this battle, excellent, keep up the good work, got it, you can count on it, the industry is small, and in the following months, Gu Consulting and MO Group crossed paths frequently. Pablo, determined to prove himself, consistently outperformed Diego. Eventually, Eva couldn't take it anymore and came to see me again. Luis, you built MO Group from the ground up. Do you really want to see it collapse? I responded calmly. What are you trying to say? You know Diego's capabilities are limited. Why are you targeting him? We're in the same industry. Competing for business is inevitable. It's all about skills, Luis. Even though we've broken up. You still own 10% of MO Group's shares. Can you really stand by and watch MO Group go bankrupt? I had almost forgotten about that. Back when MO Group was on the brink of bankruptcy, many shareholders were selling off their shares to stabilize the situation. I borrowed money to buy them up. I gave her two options, either you buy my shares at market value, or I'll sell them to someone else. Luis, do you have to do this? Eva said anxiously. Let's not bring personal feelings into work. You've always been very professional. Yes. And right now I'm talking business. I shrugged. Since you appointed Diego as general manager, 
The company's performance has been declining. For my personal financial interests, I don't want to hold on to MO Group shares anymore, but I don't have enough funds right now. Then I can sell to someone else, but you might lose your controlling interest. Eva is the largest shareholder with 45%. I hold 10%, and the remaining 45% is scattered among other shareholders. Losing control means MO Group would no longer be under her command, and her position as chairman would be in jeopardy. Luis, I don't believe you would be so ruthless. Just wait and see. I contacted potential buyers to discuss the sale of my shares in MO Group. The news caused quite a stir, and soon everyone in the industry knew about it. Diego was terrified that if Eva lost her controlling interest, he would also be ousted as general manager. He persuaded Eva to use all the company's liquid funds and even mortgage their current villa to scrape together enough money to buy back my shares. From then on, I had no further ties to MO Group or Eva. Upon joining Goo Consulting, I learned that MO Group's rapid rise in recent years was partly due to Carolina's concession. The consulting company was founded single-handedly by my grandfather, and after Carolina took over, she implemented an iron-fisted policy, overhauling the internal staff and appointing her trusted allies in mid-to-high-level positions. Externally, she expanded the business and secured a place in the international market. Few domestic consulting firms could compete with Goo Consulting, except when facing MO Group. Goo Consulting would deliberately step aside. This gave MO Group the opportunity to rise. However, now that I was in charge of Goo Consulting, MO Group would not be so fortunate. I split the planning department into two divisions. The original planning department of Goo Consulting focused on high-end clients. The team of former MO Group employees led by Pablo formed a new department, specializing in the mid-to-low-end market. Pablo, being the gossip he was, never missed a chance to share some juicy tidbits during his work reports. I heard Eva recently hired a planning director from abroad. Because of this, Diego has been causing a scene at the company every day, turning MO Group into a marketplace. The new planning director at MO Group was chased away by Diego, and now their proposals are a mess, damaging their reputation in the industry. Word is, MO Group is financially strapped. Eva's villa has been repossessed by the bank, and she's now renting a place. Eva and Diego had another fight last night. She showed up to work today with two black eyes. I wondered, do you have surveillance at MO Group? How do you know every little detail? Pablo laughed. The old planning department work group chat has turned into a gossip chat. The remaining few veterans at MO Group complain all day long. Is that so? I smiled, looking at the fallen leaves outside the window, and threw out a typical domineering line. The weather is getting cold. It's time for MO Group to go bankrupt. The latest financial report showed MO Group's revenue plummeting. With losses in the tens of millions, the stock price dropped accordingly. Shareholders began selling off. And after several consecutive limit downs, MO Group faced delisting. The scene from 10 years ago repeated itself, and Eva had no idea how to handle it. Last time, I carried the burden for her. This time, there was no one to help her. Eva thought of me again. She waited at the company entrance for half a month, finally blocking my car. Luis, MO Group is going bankrupt. Please help me. Diego is the general manager of MO Group. You should discuss it with him. She cried. That bastard. Seeing things go bad, bought a ticket and fled abroad overnight. I can't reach him at all. Oh. I see. I looked at her gently through the car window. Eva. This is the choice you made. You have to live with it. Luis. You can't be so heartless to me. She clung to the car window, crying miserably. I know I was wrong. I was way off. Please forgive me this once. Luis. Without you. M.O. Group and I can't survive. Sorry. I'm very busy and don't have time to help you. If you really can't go on, don't force yourself. The bodyguards pulled her aside. And the car drove off. In the rearview mirror, Eva collapsed on the ground. She seemed unable to believe I could say such heartless words. I wasn't lying when I told Eva I was busy. Carolina seized control of the entire Goo family group while the old man was hospitalized. She conducted a major purge within the company, placing her people in key positions. The old witch and her two sons were desperate and fought back fiercely. But Carolina had cleverly obtained evidence of their embezzlement and reported it to the old man. In his younger years, the old man had been quite the philanderer. But as he aged, he became more concerned about his bloodline especially seeing me return to the Goo family. He no longer cared about his two stepsons and was coaxed by Carolina into relinquishing the chairman position and transferring most of the company shares to us. Carolina became the chairman and immediately sent the old man to live abroad. After returning from the airport, she kicked the old witch and her sons out of the house. The old witch cried and cursed Carolina for being unfilial and threatened to find the old man. Carolina sneered. I sent him to a nursing home in northern Europe. If you don't mind the cold, go find him. But even if you do find him, it won't help. The shares are in Luis's and my names. If he dares to say no, I'll stop paying for his nursing home. The old witch, still defiant, 
conspired with her sons to kidnap Carolina, but we were prepared and set a trap, sending the trio off to prison. Six months later, the Gu family group was renamed Ming family. Ching Ming Festival. Carolina Gu, no. She's Carolina Ming now, and I went to visit the graves. She placed the flowers, and I set out the offerings. Grandpa, Grandma, Mom, we have come to see you, Carolina said. I added, we have reclaimed the company. The Ming family is thriving under sister's leadership. You can rest in peace. Turning to Carolina, I said, sis, you haven't been resting well. Let's go for a follow-up at the hospital. Carolina looked puzzled. Check what? Your colon polyps. She casually replied. I had them removed right after the diagnosis. It's all taken care of, but you said they were precancerous and dangerous. I glared at her. You tricked me and made me worry for so long. Oh, dear brother, if I hadn't tricked you, would you have come back to the Goo family? She put her arm around my shoulders. Sis isn't sick. You should be happy, but you. Hey, mom is watching. If you get mad at me here, she won't be at peace. All right, you win. I also put my arm around her shoulders and smiled. Mom, see, even when sis bullies me. I don't get mad. We siblings are close. The Ming family thrived under our joint efforts and became immensely successful. One day, a client arranged a meeting at a high-end bar. I didn't expect to see Eva there. To lighten the mood, the client had hired a few hostesses, and Eva was one of them. When she saw me, her eyes instantly turned red, but she held back her tears, forcing a smile, and kept drinking with the others. When the party ended, I was the last to leave. Eva grabbed my sleeve and wouldn't let go. Luis. I know I was wrong. Please forgive me. She knelt in front of me, sobbing uncontrollably. You loved me so much before. Every time I made a mistake, you couldn't bear to scold me. I've suffered and been punished now. I know now that no other man in the world was as good to me as you. Truly loved me. From now on, I'll be a good wife and love you forever. Too late. I pulled my sleeve free and brushed it off lightly. Eva, you no longer have the right to say you love me. Amid her heart-wrenching cries, I left the bar. I walked out of her world.